everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Marketing on Tap, a vlog and podcast. This is my mate, Danny Brown. My name is Sam Fiorella. Today, Danny, uh, we want to talk about COD. COD. COD, yeah. <laughs> or uh, more specifically, <laughs> an article. Like, So what's in the news this week in, in terms of marketing? And Uber Eats uh, over in the UK. Um, had a kind of, I guess, an interesting idea. They partnered with a, a chain of fish and chips shops there, of course. It's the UK. What else do yeah. they have there but fish and chips? And they came up with a contest uh, where they would give away a free COD with every COD offer that leaves their stores. Now, COD, for those, gamer, for those of you that aren't gamers out there, is Call of Duty. So the basic premise here is that they were going to be giving away a copy of Call of Duty, very popular in-demand game. Uh, so latest one as well, the Black Ops. The okay, Black Ops, yep. yes. Uh, so that's kind of appropriate, uh -huh. Black Ops. And uh, so with everyone, and of course, this went horribly wrong, which we love to talk about examples that go horribly wrong and uh, how we would have done it differently, potentially. Uh, so let's talk about that. But before that, as always, Danny's mm. pouring something interesting. I do, and it's a nice dark ale there. Uh, aptly enough, it's called Waterloo Dark. Waterloo Dark. Waterloo Brewing Company up in the Kitchener area of Ontario. It's one of a, um, one of the bigger suburbs of Toronto. I guess, is that a suburb of is Toronto? Is a suburb? They could, probably could don't want to be known as no, a suburb of Toronto. <laughs> Sorry, Waterloo. <laughs> probably not. But uh, this is one of their originals, like one of their brand, you know, brand original beers. Um, it's a core beer all year round. Very dark ale, as you can see. It's a pretty light IBU at 14, so there's no bitterness there. We're not going to get drunk? Um, no, but they've got, a, not like last week with the... Uh, oh my God, <laughs> guys, that ale. I stumbled out of here <laughs> last week, like literally stumbled after one glass of that it stuff. That was good. But yeah, this has got a nice mix of Canadian malted barley, uh, some specialty malts, uh, specialty malts, imported hops, and pure cultured yeast. So Say that uh, five times fast without uh, a Scottish accent. Okay, so cheers. Cheers, cheers guys. Cheers, Robert. Mm, I like that. It's, it, I am. Um, I have a, a love hate relationship with Waterloo Brewing. Some of the beers I can't really get into at all. Yeah. Uh, some like this I really like. Um, so that's it's one of these funny brewers that you know. I always have a hard time with dark myself because when you see a dark beer, I'm thinking Guinness and I'm expecting the creaminess and the thickness and you know the goodness that's Guinness. Yeah. But this drinks like an ale. Yeah, like an English ale. Basically. You know what I mean? Like, so which is not a bad because I like English ale, but. You know, it's this cognitive dissonance. I'm looking at it and I'm expecting one thing and I'm drinking something different, but the flavor is quite yeah, good. Yeah, it's nice, multi. Well, thank you. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, um, I will enjoy this one and not stumble out of here afterwards. Um, although we can potentially do that by going to a pub afterwards. We can do that. <laughs> anyway, so we want to talk about this campaign. So, Danny, uh, what went wrong? Okay, so, I mean, first, the game. Call of Duty Black Ops, one of the most anticipated games of the, the season. You're a gamer. I'm a gamer. Got my Xbox One X at home. Yeah. Um, I don't play the Call of Duty Black Ops games, but I do play the Call of Duty uh, core games. So I know they're pretty because you're, Because you're not good enough to play that game? No, I'm not geeky enough to play that game. <laughs> Maybe I'm too geeky for that one. That's a specialty geek. Okay. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, so a highly anticipated game. Um, so the fact that you could buy um, or, or get a free copy for essentially spending 10 bucks on fish and chips and the game retails at 80 bucks and upwards. Wow. Right. So there's a huge, you know, disconnect there right away. So the fact that there was a highly popular game, they must have known there's going to be a, like a big, big, you know, hit. Um, and it was just cr crafted, you know, incorrectly. Like the optics behind it, the amount they gave the stores. Yeah. Well, the, let's, the let's explain to, yeah. to, to the audience what went wrong. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll skip right to the end. They didn't have enough games. So they made this big promotion, and this is a a chain of a popular chain mm -hmm. of fish yeah. and chips. So when they too. promoted it, everybody wanted it, and so everybody started ordering fish and chips, mm -hmm. you know, or cod and chips cod, specifically, yeah, cod, and chips. cod and chips to get the copy of COD. And uh, then there was not enough games to go around, so almost immediately they sold out, and they they tried to make it right. And so they, uh, I'm just reading the article here. They said that. Um, the, the, the fish and chip company, which is Harry Ram, uh, Ramsden, said um, the anticipation and enthusiasm for the new COD game were demonstrated in the speed at which this promotion sold out at our London and Manchester stores, very specific about the stores, due to an unfortunately timed technical issue in our Birmingham outlet. A small number of game enthusiasts were initially left disappointed. 
As soon as we were made aware of these, uh, uh, this issue, the matter was shared with the team at Uber Eats and swiftly resolved. So this is what they posted on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And fine, they apologized. They said some people were left disappointed, meaning that they're putting on they're put on a wait list. They're not getting it that day, but yeah. it will come. But it's been resolved. And it's been resolved. Basically, they said as of they actually said as of now, this is a resolved issue. Well, of course, that wasn't the end of the story. As it turns out, there was only 40 games purchased and made available for the entire chain. Yeah. One of the most highly anticipated games, $80 game you get for buying $10 fish and chips that they're going to buy anyway. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, of course, this is now, you know, talk about evergreen content. This is not going to go away. Oh, no. You know no. what I mean? Like a year from now, when we're talking about failed marketing gimmicks, we're going to be coming back and referring yeah. to this just like the old pepsi kendall jenner yeah, exactly. fiasco that we keep coming back to <laughs> you know what i mean like th this is gonna haunt this company for a while so clearly they did not plan no properly so what would they have done differently here like what what was rule number one that they broke uh rule number one is the fact that they obviously knew they only had limited amounts and to put it as a big national offer uh, even though there was only three chain or three of the chains involved london and manchester pretty big chains right right exactly um so yeah i mean the, they clearly knew they never had enough. Or they should have just said, be upfront, we only have X amount of games, you know, make sure you register by, you know, we talked about it today, about a, uh, a client project we're yeah. working on, about planning and preparing the audience, right? That's right. Um, and making sure the message is correct. So they needed to make sure the audience knew it was very, very limited supplies, you know, and clearly they didn't do this. They just yeah. wanted, to, you know, the sales of the fish and chips. So that's actually two of the golden rules, number one. <laughs> Understand your supply demand issue, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. what I mean, before you try and launch into anything like this. And number two, be very clear in your terms and conditions yeah. that there is only so many available. Yeah, exactly. Make that clear so that, you know, the people that get it are thrilled and the people that don't are not going to be complaining the way that they are online. Right. They can complain, oh, I didn't get it. I waited in line. Yeah. I'm so disappointed. That's fine. But that doesn't look as negative on the brand because it was clearly stated up front. Yeah, exactly. You know, the problem here is clearly this was just not a well thought out campaign. It was, I, I suspect, I don't, we don't know this company. We don't know who their marketing agency is, but I'm going to suspect that this is probably something they came up with on their own Yeah, and not vetted through a, a, a proper uh, client. And if it was, God help them fire that marketing agency. You know, they could have turned this around. What I'm thinking of, like, if this was me and I knew that I only had so many, um, I'd, I would make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know what? Yeah, there's only limited number or 15 available or 20 available at each location. Yep. Have people line up like you do for concerts. Like yeah, when, exactly. when the Apple phone comes out, the next, you know, Apple phone comes out, yeah. people are lined up around the block. They don't know if they're going to get it. It might be sold out by the time exactly. they get there. But that anticipation that they're building for that, yeah, that's going to get all kinds of additional viral buzz. And, you know, everybody taking Instagram photos of themselves while they're waiting in line, trying to get the game. That would have been another way to yeah, handle exactly. a limited quantity, yeah. right? Instead of this. The and other thing. potentially have a, 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 not a coupon as such, but some kind of voucher that says, okay, if, if you don't get one of the games that we've got, you'll get discounted games, you know. Yeah, work out something with the company if you can mail with the manufacturer, sure. Yeah. You know, something like that. Or maybe decide to host a tournament with everybody like who didn't get it, you know what I mean? Host some kind of a tournament where everybody can come and play, yeah, you yeah. know, for some other prize, yep. you know, like do something that maybe gives it a second or <laughs> a third can, way. They can play the game that they didn't get just to, <laughs> just to piss them off even more. Oh, well, they would have been, yeah. I mean, these guys I think would have been really into having, getting involved in some kind of a, of a tournament where there's a chance yeah, to yeah. win something exactly. else. So it's a consolation prize, but you know, anyway, those are just some ideas that uh, something could have been done differently, but this is not the only fiasco. Uh, no. that uh, poor planning has uh, given us. So here's one that is just, it's one of those like scratching your head. Who thought this was a good idea? A radio station. Um, <laughs> and this was, uh, was this in the UK or this is in the, in this the, the US? US? This is in the US. Yeah, California. Oh, of course, because there's a lawsuit involved. It has yeah. to be in the US. <laughs> so KDND uh, 1079 in California, there it is. Um, created a contest also with to promote the, the gamers. They were giving away a Wii, uh, the Wii, the Nintendo Wii, Nintendo Wii, uh, which is W I I. And their on their campaign was hold your Wii for a Wii, right? And so the idea here was they were going to give away one box to the contestant who came into the studio 
and could drink the most water and hold it in before they basically peed themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And so they had a number of people that did this and somebody won. So there was one person that just couldn't hold it anymore. Some people said, I'm out <laughs> and just walked <laughs> away. Other people probably just pissed themselves right then and there. Uh, but one person won. But the problem was not with the person who won. The problem is with the runner up. Yeah. The runner up, this poor woman um, started complaining about uh, headaches and she bowed out of the competition. But then she subsequently died uh, because she had uh, water intoxication. So you can die from water intoxication, apparently, yeah. which is too much water. Too much water too soon or without releasing. because Without releasing yeah. it. I don't know. Yeah, well, I guess because you just got your, your percentage of water in your body has gone up or something. I don't, I don't know yeah. the, the science behind this, so forgive me. But basically, it's a thing and this person died. And 16 people at the radio station were fired. And um, the husband, uh, and rightly so, I guess, won a lawsuit for $16.5 million against the station. Yeah. I mean, so that was like some kooky DJ's or well, yeah. producer's idea. And look at how it went wrong. So, again, I don't know that this is one that you can plan for <laughs> other no. than just don't do stupid shit. I, I think if you're doing something like that that involves the body, you have to check medical side effects, right? There's got to be something where you're thinking, okay, what can possibly go wrong here? Apart from peeing yourself or whatever, yeah. but what can possibly really go wrong? And obviously they didn't do that because then I'm guessing without checking right now, but I'm guessing if you check out, you know, what happens if you drink too much water and hold it? I almost don't want to know. Up. Yeah, exactly. Right. What happens if you drink too much beer and hold it? Uh, you just get drunk, you know. <laughs> drunk faster? Yeah, drunk faster. But yeah, it's, yeah, I just think there's, I mean, liability alone, you know, there, I mean, it showed you got a $16.5 million lawsuit. Yeah. Um, it, you know, who, who's think. thinking behind that? You know? I mean, really guys, is it this hard? Think. I mean, it, this really should not be rocket science in no. some of these cases. But I think that's a really good point. If there is something that could potentially cause some kind of bodily harm, even if you're not sure, get some medical sure. advice, add that into your, your waiver that everybody has to sign, yeah. whatever it is. But obviously, if there's this kind of a risk, don't do it. No, exactly. It's just not worth the brand. And the issue, and this is actually, I'm going to call up a, well, fun fact, actually, before I talk about that, I was in New Orleans last year with a client. And we did, I did, of course, a drinking tour of New Orleans. And one of the bars that we went to was an old bar that was brought over from the UK. And forgive me, I don't remember the name of the bar now. Um, I'm sure somebody will add it to the comments or send me an email. Uh, but they had holes at the bottom. Uh, so you could uh, just stay at the bottom. Pee. Yeah. So hold, and it, talking about holding <laughs> wow. your beer, yeah. this just hit me. Yeah. Basically, what people would do is you would drink. And if you had to pee, you would relieve yourself in the hole right at the at your feet, between your feet, so that you wouldn't have to go to the bathroom. You could stay at the bar. That's got to stink. You know, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I'm, I mean, obviously, that wasn't working there. Nobody yeah. was doing it there. So I don't know if it stank or not. But you know what? I'm actually kind of thinking, hmm, how, how do we make that modernize so that I don't have to get up and go to the washroom every wow. five minutes when we're at a pub <laughs> drinking? I'm old. I got a small bladder. I'm constantly running to the bathroom when we drink beer. Um so let's take a look at, uh, speaking of beer and beer marketing, let's talk mm -hmm. about another, uh, another Canadian example. beer marketing as well. Canadian beer marketing. So uh, Molson partying campaign. So Molson Canadian, uh, which I probably shouldn't be saying we're not that big of a fan of in terms of the beer itself. Uh, we're not. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> we're easy. not pretending. That's we're easy. not. Um, but anyway, so when Molson uh, Coors Brewing Company in Canada started a contest aimed at university students. So think about this. University students. In Canada, above. the drinking age is 19. And even then, they probably shouldn't be drinking. Um, but there's 17 and 18-year-olds in university. So there's a lot of younger age kids. So they basically did a campaign that encouraged kids to post pictures of their wildest party. <laughs> right? So think about this. First of all, you could imagine there's already all kinds of wild parties. <laughs> so uh, post the pictures. And so what they're doing basically is trying to give an award away to the school that has the, the, the craziest parties. Right. Right. So, of course, they're encouraging everybody to drink. Well, this didn't go too far because they did launch it and they started getting some uh, some crazy pictures of kids getting drunk and drinking, obviously, all holding the, the, the Molson Canadian uh, uh, bottles. And uh, the backlash from parents and from the schools was just nuts. And of course, they had to stop the campaign, but not before a bunch of students got drunk and wrecked. Um, you know, so again, very, very 
bad example of gimmicky marketing, yeah. all right, which is kind of what this all is. Yeah, These are all like, gimmicks yeah. of some kind yeah. that just, you know, trying to get that quick viral hit. And I'm just, as we're talking, I'm trying to de determine like what motivates brands to do this kind of stuff, to go so like, is it that difficult to cut through the clutter today that we have to push the limits like this to get attention? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe it is, especially when you're trying to get attention online. You know, we talk about experiential offline and yeah. events that we can do, but online, you know, we know ourselves that the amount of content is online. It's hard to see. So, um, yeah, I, I, clearly they're trying. I mean, this is Mosin. They're not a small marketing agency. Or a, you know, they've got multiple agencies working for them. Mm. Um, so clearly something, someone at the top signed off for, this is going to be a great idea and get a bunch of, you know, kids drinking their beer and throwing parties, you know, and upsetting or core customers who's the parents because basically it's the parents that drink most sitting cores right yeah so i don't know i i think it has got to the stage now where it, you're almost like clickbait marketing right yeah. Take it to clickbait -ish. gimmick marketing to me is clickbait marketing you're trying to enforce an action or a reaction that isn't necessarily there and to heck with the results or whatever you know i think we said this in one of our earlier podcasts what happened to the old-fashioned focus group yeah I mean, I guess maybe, again, this whole idea of speed to market, getting something done fast, maybe we're giving, or, or the budgets just aren't being made available to these, these brands. I'm not quite sure what it is, but ask the questions. You know what, Robert here internally is always telling us, test, mm -hmm. test, 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 right? He's, yep. he's, he's always pushing us to test everything. So one of the ideas, of course, is take a small sample group. Right? If you're if you're if you're Molson Canadian, you're going to do this. Well, run it by a small group of students, parents, and faculty members, mm -hmm. and see what the reaction is. Yeah, you know what I mean. They would have probably told you right away this is what's no. going to happen, <laughs> and you're going to step back and not get yourself into a PR nightmare, um, which just makes complete sense. Like yeah. think about it a little bit in advance. Do that focus group. You know what I mean? Is, is there one that's gone right? Uh, what what about the, the the nail polish one? Yeah, yeah. So if, um, two years ago, I think it was twenty sixteen, um, KFC over in uh, I think it was Japan. Japan. Japan uh, they were trying to get a foothold in, in the Japanese market. Yeah. So they came out with a fun, you know, uh, edible uh, nail polish in the original uh, KFC recipe, and then hot and spicy. And basically, you <laughs> could put the you know the nail polish on your nails instead of chew your nails. You wanted to get the KFC effect flavor yeah i have no it's idea good what for the, the vegans and vegetarians out there <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly so i have no idea what the, the results were um but that was an example to me of a fun one that's a little bit different you know it, it gets attention yeah but there's no well apart from the fact you're eating kfc there's no health you know issues you know but um yeah it's just it, that was a fun one you know i mean it's a fun one with i, I mean I, unless there's any kind of like lead poisoning or something, right, right, or from, something from yeah. sucking on your nails but I mean, it's funny. I think in Japan, they can probably get away with a lot crazier stuff. Have you seen oh, their yeah. game shows over there? Yeah, yeah. They're like just off the wall. And I think they can probably get away with some crazier stuff than what we might be able to get away with uh, here. But anyway, we're getting the bell, guys. <laughs> Thank you for our bell, Stephen. Uh, final thoughts uh, on gimmicky marketing. Do it, don't do it. And if you're doing it, how? Yeah, I mean, by all means, do it, but no you know, what you're, what you're wanting to get from it and who your audience is, are they receptive to gimmicky marketing? Great Lakes Brewing, one of our friends uh, over in Etobicoke, they're doing one at the moment where you can, you know, they're asking their fans to watch which Great Lakes beer character would you get tattooed on oh, yourself? Yeah. And the winner, you know, I'm guessing get like a, well, a year's supply of beer or something, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. But this has been going for a few years now and every time this comes out, people are jumping on it with all the wacky designs that they want to get, etc. So it can work as long as you're, your audience is ready for that, and the market is right for the kind of gimmick. So, and you're not and you're not threatening to kill anybody, right? Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess you could get ink poisoning from tattoos, <laughs> but that's a risk you take. You know what you're getting. Yeah. Tattoo, right? Exactly. We've got tattoos. Yeah. We know. So yeah, I think there's a place in uh, for gimmicky marketing, um, but it has to be done really, really well, and you have to look at all angles, including liability angles. Yeah, I, I agree that you know today you do you do need to do something off the wall. You do need to push the boundaries a little bit and you do need to cut through the clutter because there is just so much noise out there mm. with internet and with all the devices that we have and all the opportunities to watch various programs, streaming, you know, Netflix and, 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 and prime, uh, prime now yeah. has got their shows and everything. So you do need to cut through the clutter, but don't let the speed at which things happen on the internet change the way you plan a proper marketing campaign. Consider the focus group, consider the test, 
understand what are all the implications and run it through a series of, you know, a vetting process of some mm-hmm. kind, whatever it is appropriate for your business. For me, that's got to be number one is not just have some fun with it, but make sure that you've got those proper tests uh, and controls in place before you go live with it. Uh, anyway, so I hope we gave you a little bit of a laugh today with some of these kooky, crazy campaigns that are out there. Uh, nobody, by the way, we do not encourage you to drink beer and hold your pee. That is not a smart idea. Do not do this at home, folks. Um, and, and by the way, Danny, we're getting uh, like a pot down here next time we do one of these things just to make it easy <laughs> <No>. for me. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much for joining our episode of Marketing on Tap. Yep. And obviously, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the little notifications. Leave a comment, you know, with your thoughts, share examples of examples. Share examples of examples of gimmicky marketing uh, stuff that you're You're seen. cut off. I'm you're cut done. off, yeah. <laughs> and right. by all means, you know, subscribe to our podcast. Thank Cheers, you, everybody. Guys. Cheers. Cheers. Till next time. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Robert. <laughs>